start crowding up like that, I'm gonna send you back to the glue factory. I thought you said these three were the pick of the auction. Shh, 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 don't you know you can't talk like that around a smart animal? First thing you know, you're gonna have a uppity horse on your hands. It's been cut. Hustlers? Could be. Well, I'm coming with you. No, you take those colts back to the ranch. I can handle this. Oh, you think I can't? Well, let me tell you something. Come on. <laughs> sneaking up on a buddy like that. And what the devil do you think I'm having if it ain't trouble? I've been chasing her ever since she got out of her pen. And now she won't lead at all, at all. Your cow? Oh, didn't I just say that? Oh, now do be a nice fella and give the old girl a nudge just to get her along. Come on. Ah, oh, thank you. We'll be off now. Where are you taking her? Come on, then. Oh, oh, oh! Ah, come on. Come on. Stop. Stop, you person. Stop. Ooh. You didn't say where you were taking her. Ah, oh, did you ask me, then? I did. Well, now, what business would it be of yours, anyway? Well, at the rate you're going, if you have any distance to travel, it's going to take you quite a while. I thought I could lead her for you and give you a ride at the same time. Are you just passing through? Something like that. You'll not be having designs. Designs? Oh, now, don't go playing the innocent with me. You're a man, and I'm only a slip of a girl. And if you had a mind to have your way with me, then... I'd hardly have a chance now, would I? No, I, uh, I guess you wouldn't. Not a chance. If you'd have said anything else, I'd have crowned you. I believe you have an honest face. So come on and give us a hand up. Can we go together? Oh, oh, no. My father's a man of violent temper, and he wouldn't take kindly to me bringing a strange man here. Uh, you just wait here, and if you've got a moment, you could tie up the cow. Sir. Who may I ask for what? Now, don't go playing games with Padraig McGloin, sir. I'm a poor man, God knows, but an honest one, honest as the day's long. And I'll take the skin off that girl's back for trying to steal a cow that didn't belong to her. 
Oh, you mean that cow's not yours? Well, no. Do I look like the kind of rich man that would be owning a grand cow like that? I dare say it belongs to one of the local ranchers. I'm in deep trouble now, to be sure. Saints and all above us. I've heard they can be terrible hard on stock thieves in these parts. There, there, I... Uh, I wouldn't concern myself about it, you see. I... I know the owner of the cow. And he's a very reasonable man. I'm sure he'd forgive her if he knew her intentions were good. Bring in comfort to the sick and the aged, as it were. The ma, sir, my old mother. Declining she is, poor thing. And the girl thought a bit of fresh milk might be just the thing for her. Ah, well, I won't be bothering you with me troubles. Will you stop for supper? No, thank you, but... No, but, sir! But Drake McLoyne may be poor, but he has a spare plate and a mug at his table for a man who's done him a kindness. By the way, I'm Padraic McLoyne. My name's Scott Lancer. Put it there, sir. Lancer, did you say? Lancer? That's right. <laughs> and herself, as innocent as you please, trying to lead you up the garden path. <laughs> Bringing home a stolen cow and the owner along to lead it. <laughs> Tis a joke fit to choke a carry man. Oh, sir, come into me house, come into me house, Mr. Lancer. Wait until I tell the ma about this. <laughs> no! no. <laughs> a, a stolen cow and the owner to boot. <laughs> 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 Paddy, darling, fetch me me jug. Yes, Ma. Poor soul. Weak lungs, you know. Here you are, Ma. Here you are. Now then, <coughs> take it easy and don't choke oh. on it. A dram now and then helps her through her spells. Mara! Is the dinner ready, me darling? Aye, Father! <coughs> That's enough, Ma. Now come along, dear, come along. Come along, Mr. Lancer. Sure, it's a grand pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, sir. Sit down, Mr. Lancer. Sit down. Here you are, Ma. There you go. If you don't mind, sir, I'll be saying a bit of grace. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive through thy bounty and through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Now then, will you hand us your plate, please, Mr. Lancer? There you are. And one for you, my dear. Too careful, daughter. Thank you, Pa. Ah. And the last one for myself. Help yourself to the salt, Mr. Lancer. Thank you. Well, go ahead, sir. We've got plenty of salt. Perhaps you don't care for pretty, sir. Oh, no, sir. I, uh, I'm very fond of uh, potatoes. Just how long have you people been living on potatoes? Sure, there's nothing wrong with pretty, sir. They're a very nourishing food. And they're very filling, too. If one had a bit of buttermilk to wash them down, Pretties is a very fine dish. But how long have you people been living on nothing but potatoes? Well, now, it's been a long time. You see, sir, times have been hard. There's been no work. Me son, Sorley Boy, is out this very minute trying to find a job. Whilst me and the women, we make out as best we can. You see, sir, we are what you might call wanderers, and we've no one to look to in times of trouble. Well, how did you happen to get here? Our wagon broke down, and there was this house, and it was empty. And the old one was poorly and needed a roof, so we just moved in. We didn't think anyone would mind. They won't. And you can stay here as long as you like. I'm afraid the owner might differ with you, Mr. Lancer. Mr. McGloin, I am the owner. Well, the 60 acres that go with this place. The soil is good and... Well, a man could make a living off this land for his family. Did you hear 
hear that. It's, it's a miracle. It's an absolute miracle. A miracle. Mr. McGloin, you think it over. I'll be back in a day or two with, well, with some seed and farming equipment. You get that son of yours back here. If you decide to stay, you can start making this place into a farm. Oh, sir, I'm sure we don't know how to thank you. Well, don't. And, uh, you can keep that cow. You can keep the cow. Did you hear that, Mother? We can keep the cow. <laughs> She's fresh enough to provide some buttermilk for an old lady to have with her potatoes. Thank you, Mr. Lancer. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get the roast. What are you waiting for? Yes, sir. Ah. Oh, wasn't this grand how quick the lass was to notice that the brand on the horse was the same as the brand on the cow? Yes, <laughs> and wasn't it grander the way I played off? Oh, the outraged father that I was. Well, I'm a poor man, sir, but an honest one. <laughs> <laughs> now, for the love of soul, go out there and fetch us in a bit of something that's fit to drink. And get the long look off your face, girl. I'm telling you all, our fortune is made. Who told you to give away Lancer land? But I'm not giving anything away. What do you call, Scott? A long-term lease. What, to a bag of squatters? To a decent family that happens to be down on its luck. Decent or not, I insist on knowing who's settling on my property. Our property, sir. Uh-huh. You have a vote, so does Johnny. That's three votes. We're voting two to one against you. Hold it, hold it. I didn't throw a vote. And what are you getting at? Oh, I don't know. I say, let him stay. See how it works out. If it don't, that's all. You know, brother, I do believe that you're growing up. Sir, and where did you find me, little girl? She was at the water hole when I passed by. The water hole, was it? Ah, oh, you have met me son sorely, boy. Say, how do you do to Mr. Lancer? An honor it is, sir. The boy just got back last night, poor fellow. Sure, he tramped the country over and didn't find a lick of work. 
Well, you'll find plenty of it here. I, I'll leave the team of horses in the wagon. Farming equipment and seed in the back. Oh, sir, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Will you stay for supper? No, no, thank you. But we can look forward to seeing you soon. Good luck, McGloin. The guilt of him bristles like the spines of a hedgehog. Take a lesson from your dear old pa, me boy-o. The best way to own a man, body and soul, is if he feels guilty for the wrongs he's done you. Heaven bless me so late. Isn't it a wonder how the dear creatures multiply? Yesterday there was only six of them, and today there's eight. Look there. I think the law is coming. Good day to you, Mr. Lancer. Uh, now, what can I do for you? I'm sure this is all a mistake, McLaurin. There's no mistake. Those two. Those two of them. Great jars of it. Sheriff, they've gone and stole the whole of Matilda's litter. Woe to the transgressor, oh, that's what the Lord says. And oh, but it's woe to you, sorely boy McLaurin, me dear son. I give you my word, gentlemen. I had no idea the animals were stolen. The lad said they were given him instead of wages. He's a mere child, gentlemen. I hope you won't be too hard on him. I'll see he gets ten years in the state penitentiary. All right, come along, Sorley boy. Goodbye, Granny. Goodbye, sister. Father, don't forget your darling boy. Oh, I won't, I won't, I promise you. to you, sir. I was just thinking how lucky I was to be passing down the road last night and saw the blaze in time to raise the alarm. You black Irish devil, I think you set the fire yourself. Now why in the name of heaven would I do a thing like that? Because I had your son arrested for stealing pigs. Well, sir, if I was that vindictive, why would I burn down your barn when it would be just as easy to burn down your house with you in it? On the other hand, if I was that vindictive sort, it's likely I might burn down your barn as a warning of bigger and better blazes to come. Porter dropped his charges against the McGloins. He even gave them a bill of sale for the pigs. The black McGloins. That's what they've been calling them around Spanish wells. 
Can you really prove that the old man stole those pigs? If I could, he'd be in jail. Well, if you can't prove anything, then how can you call them thieves? Because I've had plenty of complaints. I actually found stolen property on the premises. Even made arrests. And then what? Well, you saw what happened. Complainants withdraw their complaints and refuse to testify. Tell him why they failed to testify, Sheriff. They're afraid. Afraid of an old Irishman and his son? And Lancer. The story's going around that somehow the Irishman's got his hooks on you, and if anything happens to him, Lancer will back him. What about it, Scott? The McLoins got a hold on you? Go on, Scott, tell him. Sheriff, you can uh, pass the word along that Lancer is not interested in the McLoins. However, we will support them against any malicious and unfounded charge. Pass that along to you. talk to you. Oh, you look all angry and terrible. Do I now? Oh, but I'm sure I don't know anything, sir. Please, leave me be. Oh, 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 oh. I want to talk to you more, my oh, oh, Diva! Diva! Have you no shame? Oh, for the love of the saints, Scotch Lancer, what's going into you? Oh, you oh, 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 Some answers. People are saying your family's got some kind of hold on me. I wouldn't know about that. Then where did they get the idea? I don't know. No. It wouldn't be because of what happened at the water hole. Oh, if you were a gentleman, you wouldn't refer to that shameful day in a young girl's life. Shameful. <laughs> young. <laughs> Oh, you little devil. If ever a woman tried to entice a man and lead him on, it was you. Hoity toity, will you listen to the conceit of the man? Oh, what are you doing now? Oh. I want some straight answers. Oh. 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 Now, come on, talk. Oh. Why did you put on that performance at the water hole? Oh, perhaps I wanted to. Sheila, now get away from me. No. no. I want some truth! All right. I'll tell you the truth. I was leading you on. Why? You won't believe me if I tell you. Try me. I loved you. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Look at me. Oh, you're a strange little savage. Oh, that's a terrible thing to say to a poor girl. Now tell me the truth. Was it your father who put you up to that performance at the water hole? Oh, no, it wasn't. Honestly, I swear it. Oh, so it was your own idea, because you were in love with me. Now, doesn't that impress you as a little sudden, to fall in love with a man you hardly know? The length of acquaintanceship has nothing to do with the pure passions of the heart. Oh, I see. I suppose um, you're still in love with me. Well, it's a little difficult, but... 
Yes, I am. Show me. Well, show me. Is that the way you kiss a man when you're in love with him? Scott. Lauren, this is my brother, Johnny. Oh, it's an honor to be sure. You been in there all this time? Uh huh. Well, what were you doing? Talking. Just talking. Oh, come on, you weren't just talking. How long you been here? Well, I've been here quite a while, but, uh... Why'd you come? Well, I heard a couple of Joe Talbot's cows are missing. One of the hands told me. And you just assumed that they wandered over here? Kind of looks that way. Good morning, McGloin. Hand the rest of the day to yourself, sir. This is my brother, Johnny. Ah, how do you do, sir? Aren't those Joe Talbot's cows? They were, sir. What do you mean they were? How did you get them, McGloin? We purchased, sir. Sorry, boy. Take the creatures into the corral. Aye. Good day, gentlemen. Now, wait a minute, Patty. Uh, where did you get money to buy cattle? Well, it wasn't so much money, you see, as it was an exchange. Mr. Talbot had some ditching to be done. And since me and my son are grand ditchers, we said we'd take the job for cattle instead of money. Got a bill of sale? Sure they got a bill of sale, Sheriff. If they didn't get a bill of sale, they'd have burnt down my barn or my house. Did McGloin say he was going to burn down your barn? No, he didn't come right out and say it in so many words. But I got the meaning of what he did say. Any witnesses? You mean, did they make threats in front of anybody? The old devil's too smart for that. Well, Joe, first you say that McCloin stole your cattle. Then you say that he got from you a bill of sale for the same cattle. And then you say that he threatened arson if you didn't give him that bill of sale. Uh, but you don't have a solid item of evidence that would stand up in court that McCloin either stole your cattle or extorted from you the bill of sale. I'm afraid Murdoch's right, Joe. You just don't have a case. Oh, Gabe. You know very well they've robbed this whole section. Now, how long before you're gonna do something about it? Will you simmer down? I can't do anything about it until somebody comes along with a case that'll hold up in court. That's the way it is, eh? Well, there may be a quicker way to handle this. Now, hold on, Talbot. I think you're McGloin's now. McGloin! Boy, we are blowing. What do we do, Father? Get outside, Sorley boy, and do what we planned, if this should ever come to pass. Right. <laughs> Sit down, the both of you. Ah, oh, come in, Mr. Dancer. Come in, sir. We was just talking about you. McGloin, you've got 24 hours to pack your belongings and get out of here. Scott Lancer, what are you saying? You heard me. How long did you think you could get away with it? Now, what's the man talking about? You know very well what I'm talking about. You've been stealing this area blind and using my family and me to cover up for you. Ah, I see the fine hand of the Talbots in this nasty intrigue. What are you talking about? Them Talbots has been against us from the very beginning. A nasty, prejudiced lot they are. And the threats they've made, the dirty spalpeens, violence, sir. Threats of violence against me and me family. 
and now they're using their scandalous tongues to turn our only friends against us. Now, why would they do that, McGloin? We're Irish, sir. What's Irish got to do with it? And there's them in this land that hates the Irish. Why, they shoot us down like dogs if they had the chance. Twenty-four hours, McGloin. Twenty-four hours. Twenty-four hours. You heard the man start pecking. Stand still, you lazy fat back. You call this a load? I've been where they got dogs that carry this much in their mouths. You just had it so easy around here, you think you can be as sassy as you want. That's all right. You don't need to speak to the hired hands. Oh, hello, Jelly. I'm sorry. I, I've got something on my mind. Been up to McGloin's, huh? Uh, I and Johnny's going up to Grand Creek a couple of days. Check out that dam. Do you good to come along. You want to know what would do me some good, Jelly? If I could get those McGloins collectively by the throat and just squeeze till I got an ounce of truth out of them. Yeah, but you don't need to let it eat you up. Now, you've been had before, and you're going to be had a lot more times before they pack you away. I know it. What I don't understand is why it disturbs me so much. <laughs> I do. Whoa, Scott. What are you doing here? But maybe you would be with that Irish lass of yours. Shut up, Johnny. Just dancing the Irish jig. Shut up, Over their head together. Shut up, Johnny. Oh, come on, Scott. If your ears were as big as your mouth, you'd have heard me the first time. Now I'm telling you to shut up. Look, will you wait a minute now? No, no. no. We ain't got any minutes, don't you see that? Now, if we're going to get up to the damn full dark, we got to go now. Hey, come on, what's eating you? Ain't any of your never mind. Now come on, let's go. Sorry, boy. Hurry up with them mules.
Have you any last words? No, gentlemen. Let's not be hasty. Swing them off. No, no. Wait, wait. I haven't concluded my few remarks. What I was about to say was, it is a sinful thing to be hanging a man without the benefit of clergy. No time for that, my boy. Well, the least you can do is to hear me confession and let me make me peace. All right, McGloin, get on with it. To begin with, coin friends, I have a burden of sin on my soul that dates back to be promised in youth. At the time, being of the age of 16, I met a lass named Kitty O'Toole in the village of Ballybeg, in the county of Kerry, in the kingdom of Ireland. What are you talking about? Who took your father? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. No it... doubt it was them Talbots. That's right, that's who it was. It was them Talbots come riding up just as we was packing to leave and... You don't believe me. How long do you think a man can fall for your tricks? But it's true, they've taken my father. And heaven only knows what'll happen to him if they don't help him now. after the episode of Father O'Toger's cow that I was forced to leave County Kerry and went to Dublin. Ah, gentlemen, the big city is no place for a young lad with an inclination towards sin. Let's cut this short and swing him off. You can't hang a man who hasn't made his peace. Let him finish his confession. The sins of the flesh, dear friends. Oh, the fires of hell burns hot for them that commits the sins of the flesh. It seems there was a red-headed lady who lived on O'Boyle Street. Tis true. We're thieves and vagabonds, gentlemen. But we're leaving this country, and it's not right that they be hurting my father and my brother just when we were leaving them at peace. And you there, with your long, cold face, are you forgetting what we were to each other? Oh, it's the same old song. No Irish need apply. Well, Scott, just another one of their tricks. No, it was before, but it's true now. And what else is true? What else is true of everything you've told me? What's true about the barn and the lake? I won't be keeping you gentlemen from your dinner any longer. Oh, you're just like all the rest of them, aren't you? The fine gentry with their fine linens and their fine tables. And not a devil of a care in your hearts for those who could be dying out there in the cold. Well, it's very convincing. Very convincing, but uh, it won't work anymore. Oh. You raise them hard out here in this land of hope and glory, don't you, Mr. Lancer? What is it you're wanting, then? The truth? Is that it? All right, I'll give it to you. I was born in the hold of a hunger ship coming from a dying old country. My mother, already weak with fever, died soon after. Patrick McLoyne kept me and the rest of us alive by stealing. That's right. My father learned how to steal in the misery of a hunger ship. And God only knows what it cost the poor man to steal from them that had hardly more than himself to keep me and my brother alive. And you know, it was the first thing we saw when we arrived in this fine land of hope and glory. Big signs everywhere saying, no Irish need apply. So now maybe you'll understand what it is with the McLoins. I could trust you. Well, when it comes to trust, that final question of life or death, I guess I go along with the trusting fools. At least they sleep better nights. Oh, thank you. All right. Just this one time. But I mean just this one time. Well, hurry now, will you? 
I will now proceed to me sins a later life. McGloin, you've had enough time. Don't rush me, man. All right, boys, let's get on with this. Sure you wouldn't be thinking of swinging a man at your dawn? Let's go, boys. Gentlemen, gentlemen, restrain yourselves, I beg of you. Think of what a blot you'll have on your souls to be hanging a man at night. McGloin, shut up. But a man being sent to face his maker should have the blessed warmth of the sun on his face as he goes. It'll be warm enough for your going. But I haven't completed me confession. Porter, get ready to whip the horse. It's all a dreadful mistake. One, two, hold it. Cut him down, Talbot. A pardon. A pardon, a reprieve. Stay out of this, Lancer. Now take it easy, gentlemen. Somebody can get hurt. Sure they can. If you're going to open up on old friends and neighbors to save a dirty, chicken-stealing, hog-robbing, cattle-rustling squatter, a lot of people can get hurt. But when the shooting's over, we'll still lynch him. Has McGloin had a fair trial? Mr. Lancer, if we could get him a fair trial, you think we'd be doing a thing like this? We ain't lynch crazy. It's just that we can't get protection through the courts. Well, this is Lancer property. And you won't lynch anybody here. And if you try it, so help me, somebody dies. Why are you sticking up for hit? Hey! He's gone! There he goes! Tell me! Wait! It's a trick. It's no trick. What is it? The old woman. She's dead. I'm going in. Ocon, Ocon, why did she die? Why did she lift her head when them bullets was passing over? We'll all be with her soon enough. I. Well, what are you going to do, Talbot? I'll go out and talk to the boys. mother away now for a decent burial. And I promise you'll never lay eyes on any of us ever again, amen. You did a good thing, me boy, in this time of tragedy, and we won't be forgetting it. Maybe a bit of faith can change things in this glorious land of yours. Maybe even the McGloins. Not that they were ever really guilty of anything in their hearts. Goodbye. Goodbye.
thing to think of a woman giving her life for us, son. I... On the other hand, if we hadn't killed the poor old woman by accident, we'd sure have sought and hanged the men. I... <laughs> be going along with him anymore. Where will you go? Maybe I'll go somewhere where I can get some schooling to better myself. I don't see anything wrong with you right now. <laughs> don't you now? Well, I'll tell you something. I wouldn't have had to stand there and tell you to your face what my true feelings were. I could have written it in a lovely note. Only I never learned to read nor write. Hold it, boy! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! I need something to drink before we continue on our journey. There, Father. Uh, sure, there's nothing like grieving to make a man thirsty. If you think grieving brings on a thirst, you should try dying sometime. All right, Ma. But save some for later. Remarkable recovery from death, wouldn't you say? Truly remarkable. Now that's enough, Ma. Give it here. Thank you, son. Wake me when we get there. Sorry, boy. Proceed ahead. You don't have to leave, you know that, Mora. You can have almost anything you want right here. Almost. But not everything. Oh, I'll be back someday with all my pretty manners and lovely graces. And then maybe I'll see if this fine son of yours is good enough for me. Something tells me that when she comes back, it should be something worth waiting for. Coming, Scott? Thank you.